Well, it's been a muggy and rainy couple of days this week. The afternoon storms and showers just keep coming to Kentuckyana. And that's why we've declared it a WHS 11 weather impact alert day to keep you informed as rain develops on the radar. Thanks for joining us. I'm Connie Leonard. And I'm Shay McAllister. Let's get right on over to Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine. So Ben, we've seen some lightning, some even some power outages mm -hmm. this week. Are you expecting anything like that? Yeah, Shay and Connie, thankfully, these storms are behaving. They are not well organized, uh, not packing the punch that we had with those rounds of storms yesterday and the day before. So just some downpours that we're trying to dodge right now. You see we are getting a break in Louisville right now. There are a couple little showers, but heaviest rain, a few rumbles of thunder here, and some winds maybe around 30, 40 miles per hour heading towards Bardstown, Taylorsville, uh, but not damaging storms uh, like we've seen recently. And then up the road here up I-71, Oldham County have some of this heavy rain heading towards LaGrange. And and this is still kind of that tropical rain that can be blinding if you're driving around. Might want to seek shelter for a little while and then let it pass on through. So not a total washout here. Kind of hit or miss stuff over the next uh, couple of hours. By around 8, 9 o'clock around sunset, we're going to lose that energy for these showers. And it'll trend drier as we head towards sunset. And speaking of drier, finally a dry weather pattern begins tomorrow with the showers moving off to our east. And we've got a long dry pattern coming up in our full forecast. Right now, a muggy 80 degrees feeling like 83, but a lot of the clouds and those showers holding those temperatures down in many areas. 75 in Sellersburg Valley Station checking in at 76 degrees. So we've had the rain feeling better at 72. Still a very warm 87 waiting on some of that rain in Campbellsville. I'll show you how long this next dry pattern will last coming up in our full forecast. All right, Ben, thank you very much. With the threat of severe weather on the way, we want to make sure you grab your phone, scan that QR code you see on your screen, and download the WHAS 11 app. It's the best way to get push alerts, live updates, track the storms, and if you do lose power, you can watch us live. Right now, police are on the scene of a car crash where they found a teen who was shot in the arm. Officers responded to 24th and Market just after 2 o'clock this afternoon. Now, detectives believe a family member was trying to drive the teen to the hospital when they crashed into a building. The teen was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. No one else was hurt. Right now, police are trying to find out where that actual shooting happened. Well, a ruling handed down from the NCAA means that the University of Kentucky has to vacate several football wins from a successful season. Sports director Ken Spencer joins us now with details on the violations and what the university is saying today. Yeah, guys, for Kentucky football, all 10 wins from their 2021 season have been vacated, and they, along with swimming and diving, have been placed on probation for two years as a result of separate investigations. When it comes to football, 11 players accepted payment for hours they did not work in a job at the UK hospital. UK says it was their compliance department who uncovered the wrongdoing and self-reported. You might remember running back Chris Rodriguez and defensive end Jordan Wright were suspended at the beginning of that season due to an investigation. This is it. Here's what UK president Dr. Eli Capilouto had to say about the negotiated resolution. We respect the process. We respect the decision. And we are going to uphold the integrity that has marked UK athletics for decades under Mitch's leadership. Kentucky's 10 win 2021 season marked just the second time since 1977. UK had won 10 games in a season. As for swimming and diving program, their violations are because they exceeded practice hours for nearly three years. Those violations occurred under then head coach Lars Jorgensen who's been accused of sexual assault by several former swimmers. Ken Spencer, WHAS 11 News. All right, Kent, thank you very much. Today, five parents of Black Jefferson County Public School students testified that the district's new transit plan is a violation of their students' civil rights. Reporter Travis Breeze and photojournalist Jessica Farley tell us the main arguments from both sides. The parents suing JCPS said in federal court Friday that their minority students are disproportionately affected by these transit cuts. Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio took the stand as well and said that students in poverty might be disproportionately affected, but he was careful to not say anything race related. 
Five parents went to bat for 12 to 14,000 on Friday, arguing it's unfair they don't have transportation to magnet school programs and are unwilling to send their kids to their reside schools, which still have transportation. Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio pushed back against any notion that students can't be successful graduating from a reside school. If these parents win the lawsuit, the district will have to revert to last year's transit plan with redoing all the routing they say school may not start until October or November. Have you heard any parents tell you, you know, you're really screwing up? What I've we heard have. both sides, um, but I, a lot of from my side, I'm on the West End, so a lot of the parents from my side say, what can we do to help? Um, thank you for being the voice. While these parents argued the new transit plan is unequitable, Dr. Polio said they made the change because of a complaint from the federal government last year. The U.S. Attorney's Office, I want to be clear, met with us and said students of color are missing minutes at three times the rate of white students in our schools and there's millions of minutes being lost and you need to do something about that. It will likely be at least two weeks until the judge issues any orders. In Louisville with photojournalist Jessica Farley, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11 on your side. Well, JCPS is trying to bring back as many of the magnet and traditional routes as possible with up to 70 TARC drivers coming on as school bus drivers in the next few weeks. Now, the district said 12 of those drivers have completed all training as of Friday. Students at Anchorage Public Schools will head back to class two weeks later than planned. The school board signed off on making August 26th the new first day of school. That happened during a special meeting this morning. Superintendent Karen Solis made the request after mold was found in the building. To make up for the delay, the district plans on eliminating half days in their calendar. The last day of school will be on May the 30th. Only on WHAS 11 News, a controversial bar in the Highlands could be losing its liquor license. That's after repeated attempts by the city to end the violence there. The state is now stepping in. Isaiah Kim Martinez has the records detailing the incident that authorities say crossed the line. Along the often bustling intersection of Bardstown Road and Bonnie Castle Avenue is a reminder of the standards Cafe 360 posts on its own doors. No firearms or other weapons allowed on the property. There are consequences and once those lines are set up, there is no option. You either have to enforce it or have the chaos that we have had in the past. Yet, according to authorities, guns keep finding their way inside and in select cases, drawn, pointed, and even fired. It's not a victory. It is a lack of awareness that compliance has many ways to gain. The controversial Louisville bar is at risk of losing its liquor license. According to state records obtained by WHAS 11, Kentucky's Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control has issued a notice of violation against the bar owner to revoke the business's liquor licenses. This centers around an incident from May 17th. Documents show police arrived at Cafe 360 around 4.40 a.m. to a fight at the bar. The state ABC says it escalated. Someone drew a loaded gun and aimed it at another person. Authorities accused the business of failing to have on-site security or metal detecting wands. They say this was a violation of the agreement they made with the city after a deadly shooting inside the bar in March. I talked about the issue with Aaron Gavan, president of the Highlands Commerce Guild. It's not a, a one-stop shop in the sense of how to shut a business down. That's sure. not what this process is about. It is stop the chaos, stop the craziness, and there's ways for businesses to participate in that. Now it appears Cafe 360's chances to find a common ground are dwindling. Metro ABC tells us the state's case will take priority, and the city's efforts are on hold pending that outcome. Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11, on your side. And a state pre-conference hearing is set for September. We will keep you updated. We did reach out to Cafe 360's owner, but haven't gotten a response. New right here at 5 o'clock, a member of the former LMPD chief's office has resigned following a recent incident. LMPD confirms Officer Yolanda Baker was involved in an incident during a recent event that led to a police report being filed. Baker resigned from the department on Wednesday. According to LMPD sources, Baker worked closely with the former chief, Jacqueline Gwen Villarreal. Right now, there's been no arrests in this case and no charges filed in connection to the incident. 
And an Indiana judge has ordered the mother of a little boy found in a suitcase to go to a psychiatric facility. Dijon Anderson is accused of killing five-year-old Cairo Jordan and leaving his body in rural southern Indiana. According to new court documents, Judge Larry Medlock found Anderson incompetent to stand trial and ruled she could not represent herself in court. His decision comes after two doctors submitted competency reports last month. Judge Medlock says all future hearings will be rescheduled once Anderson completes mental health treatment and is competent to stand trial. Vice President Kamala Harris has enough Democratic National Convention delegate votes in a virtual roll call to earn the party's nomination, according to the party's chairman. Vice President Harris, now the first black and South Asian woman ever to secure the top of the party's ticket. Now all eyes are on who she'll pick as her VP candidate. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, along with several others, of course, on that short list. Kelly, Democratic Senator of Arizona, also on that short list. Tim Waltz, Governor of Minnesota, also on that list. J.B. Pritzker on the list. Well, Harris is expected to announce who will be her running mate by Tuesday as the race narrows. Former President Trump preparing to spend the weekend on the campaign trail with a rally Saturday in Georgia.